Okay, next up on the bench is a Missile Command. This one was working and then just decided to die, which is not unusual for Missile Command. Uh, uses the crappy 4116 rams. Uh, it's 6502. I put a zip socket in there so that I can put the fluke in it for later. Got, uh, I believe that's the pokey. Uh, and right now I have it hooked up to go into test mode. Uh, it ha originally had the uh, multi kit in it that gives us missile command and super missile attack, uh, basically the sequel to missile command. But in order to work on the board, I've taken this out. And I programmed a new set of ROMs here. So these should all be good since they're brand new and verified. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to be look at the power. It says 5.7 up here, but it's actually, but when it actually gets to the board, it's going to be right around 4.9. Uh, it's quite a bit of drop. This board pulls a lot of current. So let's go ahead and fire this up, and you'll be able to see what we get, which really is not much. Uh, five volt, twelve volt, and that's five volt. As you can see, there is not much. And I turn the audio on here because if go ahead and reset. Uh, assuming I got the right, uh, assuming I have it hooked up correctly, which I may not. I just had to add the audio to it. That, but if there were, if it was able to boot, you and there were rammers or rammers, then it would sit there and it would beep, and then you could look in the. Uh, manual and it would tell you what those beeps meant. Uh, in fact, I think right here uh, let's see uh, so we're gonna go ahead and turn that off for now because that's not that's making a lot of noise that I don't care about right now. Uh, let's see, bad RAM. Actually, that's that's interesting. White screen appears. Nope. I thought this played beeps. Diagnostic tests. It's on position. Enter self test and set the. Yeah, see, we're not we're not getting anything. Uh, I bet if I look in the manual, let's go. Uh, don't have the missile command handy, so well. Either way, we're not getting squat. So the next thing we're gonna do. Uh, we're going to test the basics, and that is we're going to check to make sure it has a clock, and then we're going to make sure that it's not being held in reset. So I'm going to go ahead and disable the test, and for missile command to work it needs plus 5, minus 5, and plus 12 volts. If you don't have those, then it's not going to work because that's required by the RAM. But I'm going to go ahead and power cycle the, the 5 volts here. Oh, now we're getting something different. Interesting. Because we're not in self-test. Okay, well, that's different. <clears throat> Alright, so... We're in DC voltage here. Let's go ahead and 
So now we can see. Let's see if we can get that off there a little bit. Does that help? Nope, that doesn't do squat. All right, so my ground is right there. So we're gonna look into the ground. Plus five, eh, we're 5.1 now. Over there, on the other end of the board, 5.2. All right, so we're gonna lower our voltage slightly. All right, so what do we got now? 4.8, so we need to increase it slightly. That's pretty close. 4.9 there. 5 there. Plus 12 is 11.72, which is fine. Minus 5 is minus 5.1. That's fine. Okay. So all our voltages are good. Now we're going to want to look at the CPU and we need to get our probe for that, pop that out and we will look at this, come on, get untangled. All right, so we're looking at the, that is our clock, if I can hold it on there without falling off. There we go. One point, it's one point, it's right around 1.2. Uh, the crystal on this is brand new, so that's probably pretty good. Now we're going to look at pin 40 on the CPU and as you can see pin 40 is pulsing like crazy that means the CPU is constantly resetting so what we're gonna do is we're gonna disable the watchdog and see if we get anything different chances are we're not gonna get anything different here uh, all right <clears throat> so to disable the watchdog let me grab my cable here okay so we're gonna find a lug like this one that's marked ground try not to short the board out here let's reset all right and then you find the other lug that is labeled watchdog disabled, which is right here. Watchdog disabled. Okay. And we're still not getting anything. Let's power cycle. We're just getting garbage on the screen. So, but if we look at the Go back to the scope. And we look at pin 40. We are now high. Okay, so pin 40 being high. So we're gonna look at my cheat sheet here for CPUs. And 6502 is over here. Pin 40 is reset. And the bar over that means that it is active when it's low. So the fact that if it was low, then we would know that the CPU is being held in reset. But it's not. So I think the next thing we're going to need to do, we've checked the voltages, we've checked the clock. We'll check to make sure that the CPU is not being held in reset. So our next step is going to be to hook up the fluke and go from there. See what we get. 
Okay, this repair is complete. Let's go ahead and go over what was wrong and what I found and what I fixed uh, and what I learned. I learned that making assumptions bites me in the ass every time. Uh, I had assumed that the board was working and then stopped working and that nobody had attempted to fix it but that was incorrect turns out that there was prior work and I didn't bother checking that prior work we'll take a quick peek at the prior work here as you can see there's some prior work there and all down there and they were uh, there's probably a little more but that turned out to bite me in the ass pretty good. I uh, wasted a lot of time <laughs> testing stuff I didn't need to test. Had I just checked the prior work, I would have found out that this chip here had two pins, one and two, bridged. And that there was a missing or disconnected wire on here. One of the wires had broken. Uh, this the socket on the pokey had a screwed up uh, socket on the pin or a pin in the socket if I could talk uh, then the ROMs these all had original uh, sockets and I'd put it back to stocked so I could debug the board without the kit and I was getting the board wouldn't boot and it was failing the ROM tests on these two ROMs so had I just replaced the, the sockets initially I probably wouldn't have had to deal with the bad ROM issue uh, but it taught me a few things using the fluke and the scope so all is not lost on that so what else was wrong with it uh, that was the majority of it. it was failing the RAM test and the failing of the RAM test was because this chip here was selecting this M9 the 244 here at the same time it was selecting the 244 here so these two chips were fighting fighting the bus to see and this one was losing so that's why the RAM test was failing so I fixed the bridge on that chip of pin 1 and 2 and then that fixed this was no M9 was no longer being selected at the same time that one was and it passed this is the RAM test and then of course these had crappy sockets replaced the sockets that fixed the ROM problem fixed the prior work for the wiring and that also helped with the RAM problem. So other than that, it seems to be working just fine. And I've had it running on the bench for several hours and haven't had any issues. So that pretty much sums up this repair.